Hi, welcome to another edition of Heart of a Pronghorn, where we catch up with Pronghorn alumni and see what they're doing now. We're very happy to be joined today by former Pronghorn men's soccer player, Michael O'Brien. Michael played for the Pronghorns from 2005 to 2010. Uh, he was a defenseman for, for the team. Um, he graduated with a Bachelor of Science and was a multiple academic All-Canadian and in the 2009 season was named the Canada West Student Athlete Community Service Award winner. Thanks for joining us today, Michael. It's uh, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You know, first, uh, you know, being originally from Calgary, how did you end up at the University of Lethbridge? Um, it's kind of, it's a pretty simple story. I, I was, um, I wanted to try to play uh, varsity soccer, uh, university soccer. So I emailed um, you know, I'd grown up playing soccer, obviously, my whole life. And so I emailed a few different coaches. I emailed coaches um, at UFC and University of Victoria. And I emailed Randy Bardock in Lethbridge. And Randy was actually the only one who responded to me um, out of the three guys, uh, the three coaches I emailed. And that just kind of piqued my interest a little bit more. And then, you know, we had kind of a little bit of a dialogue. And I think I came to one, um, one or two kind of informal ID sessions he had in Calgary um, that summer um, after I graduated high school. And, um, you know, Randy, I think after that, we just kind of stayed in contact and then I made my decision. You know, I, I was still considered a lock-on player, I guess, but I made my decision to come down to Lethbridge and try out for the team after that. Yeah, and, you know, you look at, uh, you became a, a pretty important role on the, on the back line there for uh for the pronghorns men's soccer team so it worked out well for you and uh, for the team as well yeah it did for sure i mean it was uh definitely kind of you know looking back you know when not something i would have anticipated or expected to have happen um but you know it was it was certainly an amazing experience the whole time for sure you know, now that you've been, you know, away from the program for a few years now, you know, when you look back at your time at uh, University of Lethbridge and, and with the Pronghorns, you know, what are some of, you know, your highlights or favorite memories that uh, you took away from your time? Um, well, I mean, for sure, kind of one of the biggest things is just the teammates and my friends I made throughout all my years down in Lethbridge. Um, a lot of the guys that I met through playing soccer, I'm still friends with. I still play soccer with some of them now. Um, and so that's probably, you know, the biggest, uh, the biggest thing I look back on is just those friendships and, uh, uh, and connections I made. Um, you know, some of the other stuff that uh, kind of more, um, you know, character growth and character building that playing a, a varsity sport uh, did for me, I think, is also something I really appreciate and I, I'm able to use kind of all the time now. Um, just with, you know, uh, facing adversity, whether it's, you know, playing on the road or playing, you know, teams that are better than you, uh, I think that uh, builds a lot of uh, strength and resiliency. And that's something that I really, um, I think I appreciate more now than I did then in terms of uh, what my experience helped me learn and, and how it helped me grow. You know, and one of the highlights I mentioned, you know, Canada, Canada West recognizing you as a, you know, the Community Service Award winner for 2009. You know, talk about how you kind of got into, you know, some of the things that you did um, that led to you winning that award. Um, well, I think uh, I did a few things, you know, I think, I can't remember if it was after my third year, or after my fourth year um, of university, I went to, I, I did kind of a volunteer trip to, to Arusha in, in Tanzania, in Africa, in kind of uh, East Africa. And so I spent two and a half months there working in a hospital. Um, really, it was just kind of volunteer work and it was kind of, you know, volunteer travel. So I was able to travel a little bit at the same time. So that was probably part of it. Um, one of the other things I did is a couple, and you know, this is why making connections from my, uh, with the team is so important. A couple of guys on the team that were a couple of years older than me, they worked for the um, uh, Southern Alberta Community Living Association down on Lethbridge, which uh, the acronym is SACLA. 
And that's basically working, um, you know, uh, working with adults with disabilities. So you're acting kind of as a caregiver for them. Um, uh, you know, sometimes kind of doing um, a, a lot of hands-on work, helping them with their, you know, um, uh, getting dressed, getting bath, that type of thing, but also helping them socialize, right? Taking the prong on games, taking them out bowling. And so I did that, I think, for three or four years while I was in Lethbridge. I remember I was doing it, you know, I'd, I'd be at work sometimes before games, like I'd work an overnight shift before a game or I'd work the morning before a game for a few hours, then go get ready and play play a game after. So I think that um, was another big thing that I did that, you know, um, uh, might have helped me win that that award at that time. Yeah, you know, now let's transition into, you know, what you did after, you know, you went on and furthered your education and, and went to, I believe it was Queens uh, for med school. And, yeah. you know, what are you doing now? Uh, so yeah, I, I I went to, after my, after in my fifth year of university, I applied for medical school and I applied kind of all over Canada. Um, I had it in my mind that, you know, if I didn't get in right away, I'd apply a few times. And so I kind of had that shotgun approach. I applied everywhere and I really wasn't expecting to get in at Queens. I got waitlisted at a few different schools and Queens in Kingston, Ontario accepted me. Um, and so I kind of had to make a decision whether or not I was going to, um, wait on a wait list for one of the schools in, in, in Alberta, or was I going to make the trip out east? Um, so I spent four years in Kingston, Ontario at Queens doing med school. And then, um, and, you know, that time was an equally amazing time. You know, it's it's a, a unique school. It's got a lot of history. Um, I made some amazing friends there too. Um, and then I transitioned back. I, I actually came back to Lethbridge to do my residency training. Um, and so I did my residency training for two years in Lethbridge and in Southern Alberta. So I kind of worked all over the place. I worked in um, Bow Island. I worked in Lethbridge. I worked in Pincher Creek, Claire's Home, High River. So I worked in a ton of different areas in Southern Alberta um, for those two years. And then um, now I live in Strathmore, Alberta, which is a small town uh, just east of Calgary uh, um, between Chestermere and Brooks. Uh, and this is where I live and, and where I practice now. And, you know, you talked about when you came back to Lethbridge and then you also came back to the program during that time, you know, talk about the difference of, you know, being a player and then, you know, stepping into, you know, coaching for, for the couple of years that you spent there. Yeah. So that was really fun. Like I, you know, um, my, you know, one of my friends, one of my good friends, Andrew Malcolm was coaching, uh, helping Randy coach at the time. And, um, and so I knew I was going to be busy um, during my training. And, you know, like I said, I was kind of all over the place in different, um, different towns. But I asked Randy if he'd have me just kind of, you know, be basically a volunteer assistant coach just to kind of, you know, help when I can and where I can. And so that was and he, he, he let me do it. So I was really kind of, you know, appreciative of him giving me that opportunity. And so that really gave me a good insight into kind of what happens on the other side. I mean, you spend five years as a player and you don't, when you're young and you're a player, sometimes you don't appreciate how much work it takes to coach and how much uh, behind the scenes um, thought and effort go into, you know, planning practice, picking starting lineups, picking who travels uh, on the road. And so that gave me some, you know, a really kind of a, a different perspective. And, you know, like, um, one thing I would say for sure that I learned is coaching is um, is way harder than I expected it to be. You know, like it's um, you know it's way more than just um, you know just technical coaching skills, you know, tactics, whatever. Right, you're managing young men who are like trying to learn what it's like to live away from home, and you're doing so much more than just being a soccer coach. Um, and so that was one thing that really was eye opening for me that I didn't think, I don't think, I don't think you, you ever realize that maybe once you're in your fifth year, you might start realizing, um, uh, you know, what it's like, uh, but certainly when you're in the middle of your, your time as an athlete, you don't understand how much effort it takes just to kind of, you know, manage people and, and, and help, help people learn and grow. 
Yeah, and just kind of, you know, one final question to just kind of, you know, wrap up uh, our conversation. You know, you look back now and, you know, how did your time at the University of Lethbridge in program athletics help you in preparing for, you know, your your career? Um, well, I think it goes back to kind of, you know, when I was talking earlier about um, when you're developing kind of uh, resiliency and, and um the ability to face adversity, I think it, it, that helped a, a lot, you know, in, in what I do now in medicine, um, some days are hard and sometimes uh, when I'm working in the hospital, things are kind of not, not easy. I mean, it, it wasn't easy before COVID and certainly it's harder now with COVID. And so, um, you know, some days you're, you're really kind of not worried to go to work, but you don't want to go to work or you're just kind of, um, you know, just you're stressed out or, or whatever. And I think being a student athlete, um, when you're not feeling it and you're, you're kind of uh, not in the mood, you still have to go out and perform and you still have to train. You have, still have to show up to training. You still have to show up to class. You still have to do all those things that um, make, uh, uh, that make up what being a student athlete is all about. Right. And so I think doing that, when I was in my early twenties certainly helped prepare me for, for the rigors of med school, for the rigors of residency and now for what I do. Um, so I think that really, you know, um, being an athlete, uh, a student athlete really helped me uh, in many different ways uh, now and I'm sure in the future as well. You know, that's great. I, we really appreciate you taking some time to, to speak to us today. And uh, we thank people for uh, joining us today on uh, Hardware Pronghorn. Uh, stay tuned for the next edition coming soon.